Good evening, Danvers. Welcome to the April 9th, 2020 Topics of the Town News. It's our second broadcast on the internet, so uh, welcome to all. Uh, tonight, I have Matthew Duggan as my co-host, and we have a special guest, uh, Jim Morose. So we will not be able to take uh, call-ins uh, tonight and uh, until we get into the studio. Introductions, Jim Morose was a special guest. He has his own program. And uh, Jim, tell us about your program. What is your program? Yeah, I have uh, Jim's Table Topics. It used to be the Tea Party Alliance, but the Tea Party uh, got uh, fake news. So, so now I had to change the name to Protect the Innocent. I am innocent. And uh, we usually just talk about uh, the local issues of the day. I mean, not local, it's state, federal, just the, uh, you know, the, the stuff that happens in, in the fake news, we kind of just talk about it. Well, we, uh, we are uh, concentrating on the news in Danvers and specifically for Danvers because we have had uh, a community news, lack of community news, and we are trying to focus in on Danvers. Uh, transparency and independent reporting is our motto. The topics of the town news reporting is by Danvers producers with Danvers residents. We always report only the truth, as far as we know, sometimes with our opinion included. So we do have opinions, but the thing is that people are lacking the information that's required. Uh, the first story that we have for this uh, program is uh, Selectman's meeting report. Basically, if uh, um, on March uh, 5th and March 24th meetings, they were both canceled by the Board of Selectmen. And on March 30th at 4 p.m., the town manager held a Selectman's meeting on the Internet, similar to what we're doing right now. Uh, the public participation was uh, pretty much lacking because of the systems that we are using. Um, the town offices and the schools remain closed until further notice, uh, which is probably after March, uh, May 4th. But the items that were uh, discussed at the selectmen's meeting are basically well-defined in the memorandum that was issued to the general public, which went to the Board of Selectmen, and it was the agenda items that were discussed. And they basically accepted the direction and the directives from our governor in regards to the closing of uh, shops and uh, businesses, schools, and town offices. Uh, town offices can be reached, however, on a limited basis. I have reached into the town uh, clerk's office very easily. However, I also tried to get into uh, and talk to uh, Mark Kalela, who is the health inspector and health department in town, and uh, I was unsuccessful in reaching him. So we need to uh, maybe improve that. Uh, other items, basically there were very few items discussed. The meeting was very short. However, I have also determined that all of the, the directions that we're getting from the uh, governor is directives and recommendations. There have no basis of law. They're claiming the Defense Act uh, is what is being used to justify all of these restrictions. And the items, this is Massachusetts Civil Defense Act and related statutes. The government has been reluctant in imposing basically martial law. 
because it's unconstitutional for the purpose that they want right now. So, Jim, you, you have talked about uh, the uh, conversations that have been happening outside of Danvers in regards to the control and manipulation of the business climate in our town. Uh, what is your uh, reaction to that? Well, well yeah, it, it's, it, it's the same outside. You know, everyone thinks that this is, you know, an overreaction. I mean, when you look at the, 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 you know, in the beginning, you have to look at the whole thing. You just can't look at where we are now. You look at how we got here. We started out with projections of millions of people dying. And uh, the virus was, you know, people, everyone, Democrats, Republicans, the whole country all, all ignored it up until Trump put in his uh, travel ban in, in January, right? But bef at the same time Trump put in the travel ban, everyone was telling him he was overreacting, this is nothing. And we had Nancy Pelosi in, in, in California and Governor Cuomo here in, uh, in, in New York both saying, don't overreact to this coronavirus. It's nothing. Let's all go out and celebrate uh, the Chinese Luna Day. You know what I'm saying? Now all well, of a sudden, you know, it became a crisis and, and Trump reacted too early. I didn't do, he didn't react quick enough. But that, w once we found out there was millions, he shut the things down and started taking steps. Now all of a sudden, there's not a million people, two million people that are going to die. We're down to 80,000. So with Trump's reaction, we saved over 1.2 million people, Trump did, by, by his action. So now we're down to that. But there's, the numbers just changed just the last couple of days. And they're still overreacting and calling for the same measures, even more extreme measures, now that they know that the crisis isn't a crisis. So how does Matthew, that work? Matthew, uh, in regards to the directives that we've uh, order of suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law was issued on March 12th. What is, what is your impression of that? I mean, you know, this, this is a uh, directive from the governor of Massachusetts who thinks he's much more in charge than he is, uh, but the federals have issued their uh, recommendations uh, much earlier, and they are, were waiting for the governor to impose these, and he resisted. So there, there's some feedback back and forth between the federal and state governments. First, I want to just ask, are we on Fox News? Uh, because I, I get a kind of a slant there about who was responsible. You know, we could have, we could have uh, addressed this uh, earlier than we did. I don't think it was until mid-March that we actually realized uh, that we had to take um, some, some serious steps to kind of address this. No, that's when we took serious steps. And yeah, that was about governor, too late. It was too late. Yes, you're right. And the thing and the is, governors, that, have, governors have taken have stepped in and filled the leadership void that exists. But we don't have uh, like a Winston Churchill or an FDR in the White House. Let's let's be honest about that. So these uh, Mario Cuomo, he's, uh, he's stepped up to the plate. I think uh, Governor Baker's doing a fine job. Uh, he's, they're just giving us the facts the way they are. And even though it seems like we're overreacting now, it's better, I think, to overreact and go above and beyond what might be necessary because the alternative is to not react at all. And then we would definitely see the results of that. Today, we, right. don't, we don't see the huge uh, numbers of deaths that were predicted early on. Well, that's, that's a uh, study in the future. I think we'll get some results uh, very soon in regard to what the consequences are of the, uh, the virus. Basically, 
Can I just uh, talk to for a moment about your uh, question about the open meeting law? So right. that's something that uh, concerns all of us. I know you specifically have had uh, a specific situation. We like to go to uh, these meetings and sit in the audience. And if it's a public hearing, we like to offer input. The residents' perspectives, oftentimes the applicant is very self-serving or self-centered about what their proposals are. Um, for example, I went to uh, the, the Conservation Commission had a meeting. They're one of the only boards or committees that had a meeting since this, uh, since uh, a month ago. They met on uh, Thursday, the 26th of March, and they were had the same kind of format that we see here. I think they were using WebEx and they had the applicant and the commission were interacting in real time, making presentations, sharing their screens and the public could only sit by and watch. Um, although they did have an opportunity to send in an email with their questions. By the time you formulate a question, write it down and send it in, they've already moved on to, to, to another agenda item. So um, they had, they've stopped that and it doesn't look like there's gonna be any more of those types of meetings until the first week of May. So kudos yeah, to uh, the board of selectmen, I think to kind of just realize that that wasn't tenable to kind of main, to have meetings like that uh, in this format. Yeah, they could have that meeting by email if they had to. Well, that's that's sad part. There is no interaction, uh, public interaction at all on those cases. Uh, like we can't have uh, call-ins on this uh, program as well. And even if we did, we couldn't communicate back and forth because this goes through the studio. Well, but, you know, there is an just one other thing. There is an opportunity to do that. I use Skype for business at work. I use it all day long. There's, I also use, uh, web, I attend WebEx meetings. There's an opportunity, you could have 100 people on a call with a moderator and, and easily kind of manage it. I know over in, in Salem, they were using Zoom and they got, you know, they got uh, blasted with people that got into the meeting and made offensive remarks and posted offensive uh, writing. So that was a meeting, I could see why you don't wanna go that route. There's a way to kind of do it. It's not rocket science. Businesses use that all every day. I think exactly. we, we need to and, go And not only through. that, you know, those meetings, you know, like, like Matt said, you, they moderated. You can have over 100 people on there. And to, to minimize what happens in Zoom, the, the moderator can mute everyone and then only open the mics when it's time for the public to, to, to respond, uh, ask questions. With permission, right. Yep. All right, let's move on. Uh, this is something that has uh, transpired. The elections have been uh, delayed till June 2nd, I believe. And town meeting is June 15th. So the legislature has given, given uh, permission and i don't know why are we asking the legislature to give us permission we are under the town manager act and we're supposed to be uh you know self-sufficient uh, in this town but the legislature gave us permission to do that however i have in, uh, investigated a an incident where the board of registrars is making up the ballot for the candidates for uh, tonight at 6 p.m. And the thing is that the one thing that everybody forgot is that when this uh, restriction was imposed on our residents and on our candidates that wanted to run, uh, the time was did not run out for the signatures. The signatures would do, I believe, much 23rd and this was imposed on us on uh, March 12th or March 10th March 12th I believe because that's when we had our show at that time and we got notified that uh, there'll be no uh, access available uh, to the studio yeah can I can I jump in here because there I 
I know uh, someone who was looking for signatures to get on the ballot for town meeting member precinct one, and he was actually communicating with the clerk's office. So even though they were closed, he was still able to submit his signatures. Uh, I think it was well, the 24th was the deadline. Well, people were uh, able to uh, contradict the orders that were given by the governor that everything is closed and the town manager that everything was closed and they were supposed to be housebound, but people were afraid to go out and knock on somebody's door and say, could you give me a signature? And that's the reason I'm bringing this up because I received several phone calls in regard to that. And I suggested to them that, hey, give the person a call, put the uh, signature sheet in the mailbox, and have them sign it or three two or three members in the family sign it put it back in the mailbox and go and pick it up an hour later and that was one way of getting around it but uh, yeah. people are afraid and they are inti intimidated because they did not want to violate the the restrictions that have been imposed on us so tonight the board of registrars is going to make up the ballot for June 2nd uh, elections. And I don't know if we're even going to have elections on June 2nd, but. Well, you know, they, Mark, may I interrupt? Because typically when the, when the vote, when the register of voters uh, uh, get the poll of names for the positioning on the ballot, that's a public meeting. There's supposed to be public uh, watchdogs there. That's, you know, so people can watch. Again, that's a, a violation of the open law meeting, maybe. That's well, they're going to have it. They're going to have it tonight, and they're uh, going to be. And, and no one can go out, so, we, you know. No, we can watch it. It's in. on, it's on um, Verizon 41 and Comcast 22. Is that right? right so this show. Oh, so if oh, you don't okay. get a lot of excitement here from this show, you can watch names be pulled out of a hat right <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But because I live a little out of the Danvers box there, I will also add insult to injury by saying that uh, just in case no one noticed, all nine congressmen and both senators are all 100% Democrat from Massachusetts. And the nomination papers for anyone running for Congress are against uh, Ed Markey for Senate are due May 5th, and they haven't changed that. So how do you get 10,000 signatures if you're a senator or another 2,000 or whatever it is for a car? If you can't get out of the house and go and, and you got to be six feet, and you, you just can't do it. Yeah. But but they didn't move. It. They, you know, and people were asking the, the legislator to move that date out if you're going to, you know, restrict people from gathering and doing our normal business. I thought they were going to re, you know, I, I'm the... Uh, the recording secretary and the treasurer of the Danish Republican committee. And we had to reorganize after, you know, within 30 days after the uh, uh, right. uh, uh, primary election. And I thought they were going to move it up, but they didn't. I had to have the phone call last night <laughs> and, you know, and half the people couldn't, they tried to call in and it was a free service and uh, we got bounced, but we had a quorum. That's all that matters. You had a quorum and you got the delegates. That's right. So we had to walk the offices, really, the offices. All right, let's uh, let's move on. This thing is going to evolve into its own story in uh, the next uh, show we'll have on April 23rd, I believe. And uh, let's move on to the next story that I have identified here is Holy Week and Religious Freedoms. Basically, I found a story uh, that was not local, but it was through a, uh, a church in the uh, Midwest, in Cincinnati, outside uh, Cincinnati. For the past few weeks, uh, they have been, the mega church down the road, Solid Rock, has uh, charted in different courses of despite uh, warnings from local and state officials. Solid Rock had been holding its 1,000 strong gatherings in person 
and plans to keep the church open on Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week in Christian churches. So there are, as, as I said originally, these regulations, these infractions on our freedoms are guidelines. Churches, I'm surprised that the church, the Christians in this state and the cardinal, uh, you know, and, and the, the bishops have allowed the churches to be closed. This is the first time in my history, my uh, number of years on this earth, that this has happened. But this has happened as be being the fear of a virus that may kill some people. Some of the people will die. The thing is, are we in, in imposing these rules on freedom of religion? Matthew, what do you think? I think if uh, that church that has a thousand parishioners, um, I think they're putting their lives at risk by congregating like that. Um, I think church local churches here world. are doing. Local churches here are doing uh, webcasts. I think St. Richard's did one for Palm Sunday. So um, people realize this isn't kind of some kind of secret agenda item, that this is for the good of everyone and that it's just a temporary situation, that good times will return. We just have to be, you know, just have to be strong. That's my my take on it. I mean, we, we've done the same thing with schools. Um, I mean, it's, it, there's not, nothing nefarious going on here. Well, I, I just found this very interesting how it was uh, uh, presented. And this was, uh, Palm, this was before Palm Sunday that they identified this in the, in the papers. Uh, this is a uh, serious public health threat, said city spokesman Jeff Hood. Still, the pastor plans to hold services on Palm Sunday, said the church's attorney, Dean Broyles. Simply put, no, we're not going to obey it. The various, the virus does not suspend our constitutional rights, the right to assembly, freedom of religion, and freedom of speech. So there are uh pockets of resistance across the country and the thing is that the federal government has overreacted and the states have followed in suit all the way through so i i also was told uh today that uh, uh there's a uh filming of uh, holy thursday services i i believe and Good Friday services, uh, and then probably they'll have one for uh, Easter Sunday, probably early, early in the morning. That'll be great because you don't have to go to church. You can watch it on television. But the thing is, this is an infraction of our freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Well, well so, actually, Mark, it's, it, it's even kind of worse than that, but that's okay. You know, because, you know, you know the thing is, they arbitrarily decided which businesses are essential, non-essential. Okay, so so all the booze liquor stores are essential. Okay, so, I mean, should the churches be essential? Did we have a discussion about this, or did we just, capri you know, just arbitrarily say, eh, essential, essential, no, 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 I don't know. How did they do that? These are our leaders. They make these decisions, and then we have to live by them. At least under normal circumstances, we have to go through the legislator and the legislative process and we have a little discussion debate and we see what's going on. But with this, this is all hype overreaction to, to, you know, and they're not reacting to the current trends of what's going on. You see, because we were talking millions. Now we're down to 80,000 and we're still doing the same thing. Now people are going to, we have to wait because, we are where we are. So we, we're not going to, you know, everyone's going to do what's normal and prudent in their own minds. That's what America is all about. I'm a Christian. I believe that, you know, in, in the sanctity of life and 
any life loss is, is, not, is not good. Okay. But I think we may be outnumbered with, you know, the people who believe, who, who, who don't believe in God and who believe in evolution, you know, in that case, survival of the fittest. So what's the big deal? I don't know. I don't you either. Know? That's that's why I'm, I'm just <laughs> but, bringing I'm just stuff. playing devil's advocate. And so, what are you going to do now if if someone has a gathering and oh, they think that there's too many people in a, in one group? Oh, what what is, is the number five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty? How many people? And and so when the 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 police come and and don't get me wrong. You know, I support the police and everything else. But when the police come to 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 break up the excessive a gathering, aren't they just adding to the gathering? Well, the, <laughs> they, the, the, they are they 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 right now because they got in there. Yeah, Matthew. Yeah, they they had a uh, situation in Florida where uh, the reverend or pastor or whoever it was he he defied the the state. I don't know if it was in Broward County, but the, the sheriff actually came and arrested him. Um, and they've done that in other locations too. Where they've had to kind of um, put their foot down and say, you know, you can't defy this, uh, this initiative of separation. That's called martial law. And that's what they're afraid of because martial law is a very significant step in limiting our freedoms, whether we like it or not, uh, the government, the federal government does not want to get into it. And the state has been threatening people, but they have been issuing citations like a ticket yeah. for some of these infractions. These are, so, these people are outliers, right? They don't want to do what's best for everyone. The large majority of Americans are being, sequ are sequestered in their homes. There's these outliers that go about business as normal and uh, they've put everyone at risk. If martial law would be called for if, if the, you know, mo most people defied uh, these um, voluntary actions of uh, not going to work, not going to school, not going to the stores. All right. Well, I have well, a, okay, well, yeah. what oh, you want? I yeah, mean, let's... see, this is, well, this, this is, this is the frog in the water. You know what I mean? We've been, you know, and we don't just do this just because, oh, there's a crisis. It's been going on all along. They teach it in the schools or they don't teach it in the schools. And it's supported by the fake news and it's supported by Hollywood and all their movies and TV shows that the government, we got to listen to what the government says and what they do. And, and, and it's more socialistic than constitutional, you see. If you're going to have martial law, then be right off front say, this is a crisis. We're going to have martial law. These must be followed. That's it. No, we're not doing that. These are suggestions. Okay. And most people, again, goes back to reasonable, normal, prudent people will do what's what they think is best. And if you think that the outliers, which you, you point to the outliers, uh, those outliers, okay, we'll point to the, the, the Christian outliers who are going to meet and do this, you know, then let them meet if, you know, they can live and die by their own volition, okay? And 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 the people, that's that's just how it works. That's the, the, the essence of the American life. There's not a blood test to be an American, you know. It's a it's a state of mind. It's a spirit of freedom. Right. Well, okay, let, Mark, me, right. let right, me sure. let me just now that you can get off your uh, soapbox. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me just read a few items in here because this I found very interesting. And this is a response to cor uh, coronavirus could test limits of government powers. Federal law author authorizes the U.S. government to put in place quarantine to block diseases from crossing national and state borders. Though most of its public health power comes from the Constitution. When confronted with legal challenges to public health measures, American courts have generally tried to strike a balance between the government's authority to protest, to protect the population and individuals' rights. The, the reason I'm even bringing some of this up because I've had calls 
coming from certain individuals that I have dealt with in the past, and you know, there are a lot of sources of information. Can we sue the federal and state government for these infractions because they are unconstitutional? And they are not based on law because we haven't had this experience in the past. The last time it was during the Civil War. And the thing is that at that time it was national defense and not a virus. Yeah, can we just can I just ask you about that? Because I thought that there was a, in the state constitution there was the ability for the governor to declare states of emergency for things like uh, you know floods or nat natural yes. disasters. Yes, there is. And this is what they're claiming as their tickets to doing what we're doing because what they're claiming is that all of this thing is based on chapter 639 section 1 and 13 and it's Massachusetts Civil Defense Act and related statutes and it does not say anything about virus and contamination so the thing is, for civil defense, yes, that's what they're using. But it's not in law for this kind of a shutdown of our total uh, culture and community. Basically, well, yeah. what they're... Okay, well, that, that, that's a good point, Mark and, and, and Matt. You know, I mean, I, you know, I didn't know that that was what they were guiding those things on. So, you know, when we do have a flood, hurricane, snow, yeah, we have states of emergency. We do all this stuff, but it's for a short amount of time because we have a specific threat. So when you look at this is this goes back to what I was trying to allude to, but I'll just try to be a little bit more specific and say that that's what I mean by being able to react. You got to be able to say, okay, the crisis is over. We're done now. Again, in the beginning. There was the word. There was no. In the beginning, they said two million people in this country were going to die from this virus. Now we're down to eighty thousand. Crisis is now over. Any death well, is a bad death. But let, let me but continue. Now it's not. Now it's not a a hurricane or, or a, a blizzard of seventy eight. It's now a normal virus. It's just you know. Well, well, okay. we, have, we have all fallen in, in line because of uh, the fear of the unknown. One consistent thread running throughout the court decisions is that the government is on stronger legal footing when it narrowly tailors its actions and minimizes their restrictiveness. The government sec uh, actions, such as trying to force people into isolation and impose quarantine, would be more likely found constitutional if it focuses on isolating individuals or groups who have tested positive or which it has good reason to respect, uh, expect, suspect, are uh, exposed to coronavirus. This is the reason why they're pushing all this testing. And this testing doesn't do anything except identify that people do have the disease or, or the virus. Mm. And the thing is that they're extrapolating from that to the general public, which is 7 million people in Massachusetts. And I think 16,000 have been identified as having the virus. So it's limited to the numbers. The less individualized that determination, the more constitutionally questionable, especially if it is done without good reason linking the members of the group individually to expose or risk. The courts have previously recognized government authority in quarantine, uh, prevent travel, require vaccinations, and make people submit to medical exams, according to Price. Still, defining the scope of public health authority continues to be a work in progress. So these restrictions 
are have been done, but in, on a very limited basis for certain segments of the population. In the and past, that, right? In the past. In the past, yes. The past, yeah. This and is different, I, though. This is just a. This is everywhere. We don't know. We, there's not enough testing. We haven't done any testing, so we don't know who has it and who doesn't. That's that's the, the reason. The well, reason. But we was, also know. Ho ho ho. We also know that it's not as bad as they originally predicted. In fact, the numbers that they, they were saying, a factor of 30. If you right. were off 30 times on your projections at work, you'd be fired. They're 30% off their models from 2 million down to 80,000. And even the 80,000 are suspect because I've heard reports that People go to the hospital because they don't feel good, and then they die of a heart attack or a pancreatic. They, they, they had a pre-existing condition, and they died from the pre-existing condition. But when they tested them, they also tested them for the coronavirus. They had the virus, but the virus didn't kill them because they, it hadn't incubated. It hadn't even started yet. They just died from their regular. So, but they still count it as a corona death. Now, they, were... again, we have to wait until all the dust settles and all the paranoia and skip you know settles down but historically but you the you know we just jump from crisis to crisis it's russian collusion it's impeachment it's uh uh pina coladas in the ukraine now now it's coronavirus and it's nothing there's no other news oh, happening except for coronavirus there's nothing else all going right. on and then all as right, soon as this is over they're going to go to the next one and we'll never get the post-mortem are the, the real facts of what just happened. Just like we never got the facts of, of the Ukraine, we never got the facts of the Russian collusion, we never got the facts of the impeachment, we don't. Because the fake news just keeps driving on. They just and keep now, going. And you know what? And all, all right. the sheep go, yes, here comes the train. What do you want us to do next? <laughs> Jump the track. Now, Jim, the, the one thing that you have brought up, and, and I have a statistical piece of information here, on Monday, April 6th, <clears throat> there's a statistic, Daily Massachusetts Coronavirus Update. Uh, total normal flu versus uh, virus cases, 42,000. Total coronavirus cases, 12,500. Total normal flu virus deaths, 1,100. And on that date, the total coronavirus deaths were 231 for corona versus the regular flu. And this morning, there were reports, I don't uh, specifically know which uh, station or which newscast, but they're also asking the question, are there any deaths other than coronavirus? And that's the sad part is that we're being fed information that is erroneous and is not factual. And the even the federal uh, uh, Fauci and, and company are re now re, uh, returning back to uh, or refraining. They're backtracking from, big time. That's what they're doing. Back. Just You're like right. I told you. They go right. from two million down to eighty thousand, and that eighty thousand is gonna get lower because they inflated the deaths by corona when it was something else. And again, you know, All right. let, let, let me let me continue. Sure. Let, let me continue with this uh uh conflicting information on the on the laws. Perhaps the most famous Supreme Court case. Jacobson versus Massachusetts dates back to 1905 and deals with the constitutionality of requiring a smallpox vaccination. Major legal decisions about quarantines, which have mostly been decided by state Supreme Courts, are also quite dated. So we don't have any recent uh, infractions of our civil rights and our uh, religious rights since 1905 or even before that was civil war 
according to Scott Burris, a law professor at Temple University, the limits on government power have less to do with the type of action than with the necessity for the measure. Yeah. And okay, the that's funny. Go to Mark. Let me let me just say, you mentioned the word vaccine. It's like a that's what what do you call it? That's a that's a that's a trigger word. <laughs> Remedy. Like a, okay. So I heard, you know, when you listen to the other news, you know, if you listen to the the news that you hear 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you don't hear the other stuff that Fauci and Brick Burks, whatever her name is, you know, they're both still driving to the old num you know, they, they change their numbers, but they still want to wait until a, do everything until the vaccine is ready, you see, because they want to have the vaccine so that they can sell it and make money. And but to the exclusion to the fact that the I'm, I mean, I'm not a doctor, don't get me wrong, but I play one on cable TV. OK, <laughs> they they have the medicine that they've been using for malaria and it has been used as a, you know, as a preventive measure against the coronavirus and has been working and it's been used for over 30 years. And they're still saying we need to do we need to have more current trials trials we've been using it for 30 years that's you don't the, need a new vaccine that's what they got and it it is working now but again all the numbers are changing but they're not reacting to the new facts they're just not doing it matthew have you uh got a uh, flu vaccine this year I, every year yes in october i have Three. two jim Three. have you no, no, I have not. I think well, he's one of those anti-vax people. Anti-vax people. But the, the thing is that one of the things... Okay, that wait, we, so just because I didn't get vaccines, I'm anti-vax. Okay, got it. No, you're susceptible. <laughs> well, uh, let, me, let me just finish up this portion here. We have become sheep being dictated by inept leaders in Washington and Boston. And, and that's, a, that's a true statement. And what I, what's going on is our town leaders are doing the same thing. They're following with the sheep herd. So the thing is, I don't know what can be done about it, but uh, right now uh, it's, it's going to go into litigation into Supreme Court sooner or later because this thing is a grave infraction on our constitutional rights and maybe it's protecting some people. I can understand that. The thing is, don't inflate it to the point where it's ridiculous. So I have uh, the next item that I want to address on here because we're coming into uh, 545 and we need some time at the end to make conclusions. But I, I put down a brief statement here. Uh, public must demand immediate reversal of the current policies and admit to what the virus is. It is a biological test on what the public will accept. This is Big Brother attacking our constitutional rights. These constitutional rights have been eroded for many years under several administrations. It is accelerated, it has accelerated with 9-11 and the Patriot Act. And now we are all becoming sheep going to slaughter. Basically, and, and, and I'm gonna get criticized for this, but I think this needs to be said. Federal government is giving out payments to individuals and corporations to keep peace in the population. Socialism is going on in front of our eyes. Current reporting of deaths is not accurate. So we are being frightened to death by these recommendations that are being trust upon us. And the thing is that this is, this is not a, uh, this is a very serious matter. It is a matter of impacting our freedoms and our access to the public and be able to communicate. Uh, Matthew, you got anything right now on, on this subject? On sure. the uh, in, a, in a democracy, we get the government we deserve. So, you know, people don't vote. 
And uh, and these are the kind of leaders we we get. So I think they try to do the best they can. Um, We all know none of us are perfect. Um, We, you know, we should always expect the best and uh, maybe we don't always get that. Well, I think that's a good summary, uh, Jim. Well, you know, when you were talking about that, just reminded me of the the old saying from, I think it was uh, Benjamin Franklin. He said, if you're willing to give up a little freedom for a little security, then you're going to get neither, okay? So, again, it's rugged individualism. We need leaders that understand, no, we're not really a democracy. We we have a democratic form of electing our, our people, but we live in a republic, and the republic is supposed to be As Nancy Pelosi said, we have to honor the Constitution and do what the Constitution tells us to do. Well, let's do it then, because the the, the Constitution is clearly a limited, it's a a box that limits the size of the federal government. The the federal government is over bloated. They spent spent more money than we'll ever be able to make. But, you know, know, there was an initiative probably like 15, 20, 30 years ago that they wanted to, someone wanted to make sure that whatever bill Congress passed, they put the site in, in the constitution to say what author, the, the constitutional authority for this bill. And of course, Congress didn't want that because half the things they do are constitutional. And in fact, what Nancy Pelosi just did with the Corona stimulus package, we're trying to, send relief to our American citizens and she's putting pork barrel crap in for the Kennedy Center and 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 uh, green uh, you know uh, emission standards and fuel standards well That's got nothing to do with what we were doing but see this is what the problem is Congress makes bills for pork barrel they don't have, they, they don't take a bill that this is the name of the bill and this is what it's going to be and they pack it up with all this stuff we got we have to stop the well, okay, Jim, Jim the, the, the more important issue of this whole thing is, is that as a result of imposing these rules and regulations and uh, recommendations and all that, we have stopped and stopped in, in, tra- in their tracks uh, all business in our communities. Now, it's mostly... Uh, service uh, business, but the manufacturing has not come back. But what the federal government is doing by these uh, payments to the individuals are appeasing the uh, general public because they have been directly affected and they're using our tax money to do that. So it's a vicious cycle that they have established. And it's going to continue. So Mr. Sanders is happy as a clam right now because socialism is on its way. What I like to do is I have a brief uh, letter that I like to read. And bear with me. This is right to the point, and it goes to everything that's been happening. Uh, This is a uh, letter by Mark Skousen, why don't you wear a mask? Today, more and more of everything is either prohibited or mandated. Jorge Tudo Quiroga, former president of Bolivia, said this to him. Recently, a postal clerk asked me, why aren't you wearing a mask? I told her my response is like this. If people want to wear a mask in fear of getting the flu, that's their choice. But don't tell me that I have to wear a mask. America is a free country, or at least it used to be. But now, under the fear of a pandemic, everyone has become paranoid busybodies. The state is becoming totalitarian by mandating that schools, sporting events, concerts, festivals, beaches, public transportation, and businesses be shut down indefinitely. The economy be damned. 
jobs be damned, freedom be damned. Even if it means another great depression, millions of people out of work and thousands suddenly depressed and contemplating suicide, it is all for common good. Today's crisis is giving new meaning to Patrick Henry's cry. And we've learned this in history. Give me liberty or give me death. What the government is doing is unprecedented. I was just reading the diary of a great American who was part of our greatest generation. He wrote that the flu was spreading like wildfire in the United States and over a a third of France was sick. That was in 1953. Yet nobody shut down businesses or events. Life went on. Je yes, people were more careful and some people died. That's life. Today, almost nobody remembers the flu season of 1953. Yeah, I like your mask, Jim. An investment advisor told me that he and his wife plan to stay isolated and not leave their house until a vaccine is discovered for COVID-19, even if it means being quarantined forever for over a year. They said that they are at a vulnerable age and don't want to die. That's their privilege, but don't make every American do the same. Let them choose. This whole debate reminds me of three books that I have on my bookshelf. And this is uh, Mr. Skousen. The first is Milton Friedman's book, Free to Choose. Next to it is a book by Marxist professor John Romer with the title Free to Lose. The third book is by Yale professor Henry Wallach entitled The Cost of Freedom. Indeed, America has a choice. Freedom is not free, it comes at a cost. Remember, friends, the triumph of persuasion is the sign of a civilized society. It looks like civilization has just taken a big hit. So I just thought this was very appropriate at this point because I think we're conflicted in saving our getting safety and giving up our freedoms. And this is a continuation of the Patriot Act, 9-11, and the previous infractions on our liberties and freedoms that we have had. So, Jim, do you have anything? Well, you know, when you talk about laws and excessive laws, see, a law is, thou shalt not lie, cheat, steal, murder, kill, whatever. Don't do this, don't do that. But what you were talking about is, is oh, wear a mask, put your seatbelt on, you got to do this, you got to do that. Those are commands. <laughs> There's a difference between a law that don't do this and a command where you got to do that. So that's kind of like infringing our bandwidth of actual, what what are we really free to decide now? <laughs> you know, it's, we're it's being just limited. squeezing us. But, yeah, we're being limited right now. That's right. That's why, you know, this is the uh, citizen's rule book, right? It's the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. It's got a nice story in there about uh, Patrick Henry, too, about why he was so, there you go, <laughs> why he was so adamant about live free or die, because he went into a town in Pennsylvania, and the, and the pastor was being flogged, and he said, why is the man, why is the pastor being flogged? And the citizen said, he was preaching without a license. <gasps> preaching hey. without a license. <laughs> okay, Matthew. we won't even get into that about licensing. But Matthew, what have you got to say? we got five minutes. You're off. You're on mute. Oh, no. Oh, you're on mute now. Go on. Now I'm okay. You're okay. Now. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So just um, some observations around town. A lot of uh, people out on the rail trail, and I see people congregating down at Plains Park. 
it's really important to kind of stay the course and keep separated um, because if we get cabin fever and decide we want to start congregating together, that times are better. Um, we're just going to get a, a phase two of this and this could go on for, for months uh, through the summertime. We don't know when uh, the, the number of cases has been reduced to, to a certain point where we can return to normal. We can go back to work. So I think we just need to kind of keep what we're keep doing what we're doing. Well, it's, keep it's doing let me go back. Let me do a quick PSA here. Well, as Matt was talking, I was thinking about it about local Danvers. You know, there's there's a Facebook page called Danvers MA, Danvers Math, Danvers MA. Go to Facebook, see if you can find it. There's like 2,000, 3,000 people on it. And they're talking all the time about this very stuff, about coronavirus, about the bike path, about social distancing. And it, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there, good, bad, and indifferent. you got to figure out what's what, but you can go there. And another thing, DCAT, DanvisTV.org, you go to that website, there's a, there's a little click off there somewhere about uh, COVID-19. And it has government stuff, all the things that Steve Bath has been putting out, and and a list of restaurants that are uh, doing delivery and stuff. Uh, uh, at least you can pick up, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But there's I a have, lot of information out there. You got to get out there and find. I have a PSA of my own because I have been monitoring the uh, DanversMass.gov which is supposedly the internet connection that we should have with town hall. And you know what? The information that they have on there is from March 24th was the latest one that I saw. So we need to make that information available if we're going to ask our population to monitor what's going on and be informed. And like uh, I said last uh, time, is that the best population that we can have is an informed population, and we are lacking in that. So, Town Hall, wake up and get the information out on your site, because no, but not everybody has Facebook. No, but everybody wants to be on Facebook. But the thing is that I'm very interested in, in, in and you know that I'm a conspiratorial uh, individual, is I just hope that this is not a outbreak of a biological uh, attack on the United States. And, and uh, I hope that is, I hope to God that it's not true. But I uh, do want to uh, make sure that everybody gets protected. I'm even following the rules to some extent. But I, I'm going to have a hell of a garden this year because I have so much time on my hands. I have lettuce and parsley and uh, cilantro growing already. My, uh, uh, what do you call it? My pansies went in yesterday. I finally got all the pansies, and but they're getting flooded today. So Danvers, have a good uh, you know week. Uh, we'll see you on April 23rd. And hopefully we'll have some better news. And by then, things should be relaxing a little bit more. Maybe we can go back to work. It'd be a novel idea, wouldn't it? Oh, Well, what? Okay, let's predict when this is going to end. I predict the first week in May, if not the last week in April, that they just re relax all this uh, this well they're going to relax it slowly and there's yep. some predictions i've uh, issued to you guys uh that there are various different ways of coming back and they're going to try the quickest way they can but they're also afraid of re infestation or re uh, infection from the uh, virus so danvers good night we appreciate you and watch the uh, uh, registrar's uh, meeting uh, at 6 p.m. on channel 41. Good night, Dan. And 22 on Comcast.